In this lesson, we'll finish up our discussion of epithelia by taking a look at glandular epithelia. So we can think of glands as just collections of epithelial cells. However, they produce different secretions. We can classify epithelial glands into two types. So we have endocrine glands, which is not going to be the focus of AMP1. These are glands that we talk more about in anatomy and physiology too. These produce hormones. These are the chemicals that are being produced and the hormones are going to be released into the bloodstream and that's how the hormone gets distributed throughout the body. It's going to be in the bloodstream. Right? In the endocrine gland there is no duct work to move the secretion or the hormone. Okay, So the endocrine gland produces a hormone, goes into the bloodstream. In AMP1, we will be talking about exocrine, exocrine glands, however, we do them a little bit more. These are going to produce secretions. They're not called hormones. We just call them exocrine secretions. And these are going to discharge the secretion through some type of a duct. And that duct will open onto an epithelial surface. That epithelial surface, for example, could be the surface of the skin. So think of a sweat gland, right? When you sweat, the sweat goes goes up through a duct onto the surface of your skin. Your skin is epithelial surface. Or even it could be the lining of an organ on the inside like your stomach. There are glands that produce different secretions and the secretion will go through a duct onto the epithelial surface lining the inside of the organ. All right, so this semester we're mostly going to be talking about like sweat glands and oil glands. We'll cover those when we do the integumentary system. All right, so those are the different types of glands as far as classification, endocrine versus exocrine. Let's take a look at glandular structure. So we can um, have two categories. We can have unicellular glands if you want to give a little highlight right here, unicellular, and then we'll see that the second type, a little bit more complex, is going to be the multicellular. All right, uni we know means one. All right, so this is a, a gland, believe it or not, that is just one cell. We typically call it a goblet cell or a mucus cell. Right? They're kind of used interchangeably. So these are just one cell exocrine glands, and we find a lot of these in different mucous membranes. Um, as an example, the lining of the intestines, the respiratory system is another uh, good example. And these secrete something called mucin, which mixes with water, and that ultimately becomes mucus. So let me give you an example. Here's a simple columnar uh, epithelium. How do I know that? Right? We have basement membrane, underneath it connective tissue, and then one row of long slender cells. But notice in between these long slender cells we'll have another cell that's filled with the mucus. This is the goblet cell or the mucus cell. And what happens is these, uh, the mucus is released out onto the top of the uh, simple columnar epithelium, right? and then the mucus will sit up on top over here, help to keep the tissue nice and moist. And um, these cells work better when they're moist. They do more absorption when they're moist. OK, so this is known as a goblet cell or a mucus cell, just one, gland, uh, one cell gland. Now, more complex are the multicellular exocrine glands, right? Multi meaning many. So we classify it, uh, these, these glands, by looking at the structure of the ductwork. Then we also classify by looking at the shape of the actual glandular portion of the gland, the gland, the, the part of the gland that makes the secretion. Okay, and then we also can classify uh, between the relationship between the duct and the glandular areas. So let me show you real quick how we classify uh, the gland by the structure of the duct. If the duct work in the gland is undivided, it's just straight, we call it simple. If it branches, we're going to call it compound. Let's take a look. So here's some examples of simple glands. So if you take a look, this kind of gray area, the cells here that are gray, this represents the ductwork of this gland. So since it is just a straight tube right here, it is simple. Right? This one has a little bit of a longer duct. Right? See the gray cells on either side? It's just a straight tube, simple.
simple. Here's a good example, right? Simple right there, and then another simple. Compared to compound, compound means that the duct work is branching. So take again, look at the kind of gray cells, right? So you see here the gray cells coming in, and then watch this, it branches, it branches, it branches, right? So that would be compound, same thing here, right? Comes in, and it branches. All of these are ductal cells. And last example here, here, and here. Okay, so we classify the gland based on the structure of the duct. Then we look at the shape of the actual portion of the gland that produces the secretion. We call this the secretory portion. If the secretory portion is kind of like longer and slender, we call it tubular. If it's round, we call it alveolar, or you could say acinar. I actually kind of use them interchangeably. I kind of go back and forth, so you really should know uh, both words. Some instructors will say alveolar, others will say acinar. You know, I, sorry, I say alveolar for some organs, and then I say acinar for other organs. Uh, so just you know, kind of know them both. So what do we mean by that? Here's the glandular portion. So notice that these would be the red cells. So the glandular portion on this gland here, see how it's long and slender? So that would be a tubular. Here's a tubular also. It's long and slender, but it has a little bit of a coil to it. All right, so this would be a simple coiled tubular. Here's a, here's a uh, tubular, but it's actually the tube is branched. Right, the, the actual tube is branched, so we have three tubes here. So they would call this a simple branch tubular. Now, compared to the tubular, here's the round part. All right, so this is going to be an alveolar or acinar. Okay, so this would be um, a simple alveolar. Right, simple meaning one duct, straight duct, with the with the round glandular portion. And then this one is a branched alveolar. Again, one duct, but we have three rounded glandular portions. If we go to the next slide, same thing. All of these here, tubular. And so this is a compound tubular. All of these are round, right, circular. Compound alveolar. And look at this one. This one has a mix. Tube and alveolar, right? So this is a tubulo-alveolar. So it's actually a combination. Okay, so uh, for this semester, just kind of understand the classification between simple and compound. You don't have to know the examples of as far as where they are for this course. As you go on in your studies and you study different organs and different glands, you'll learn that. For instance, when we do um, the integumentary system, I'll talk to you about this one here. This is a simple branched alveolar. This is an example of a sebaceous gland. So we'll actually look at this as we look at different structures. So you don't have to memorize all these examples here. I mean, if you want to learn them, you absolutely can, um, but it's not required. It's, that's a little bit um, advanced. Okay, so that's how we classify our um, compound, our, uh, our uh, multicellular glands, excuse me, the multicellular glands. So the last thing I want to go over with you are the different ways glands produce their secretions. We're going to see that there's three modes or three methods of secretion. We're going to take a look at merocrine. You may see that as ecrine, E-C-C-R-I-N-E, -E, as another, another term, E-C-C-R-I-N-E. -E. Um, or merocrine, right? In, this, in these notes here, I'm going to use merocrine. Then we're going to take a look at another one known as apocrine, and then we'll finish up this lesson taking a look at holocrine. So with merocrine secretion, the gland is going to release its product by secretory vesicles and a process you may remember from previous lessons known as exocytosis. I'll come back to this slide. Let's take a look. So in this example, um, a salivary gland here is, uh, produces its secretion by merocrine secretion. If we were to look at the cells inside the salivary gland, they would look like this. Again, here's like your basement membrane, and then we would have the, the glandular cells. Um, notice here, guys, this is the Golgi apparatus. If you remember from previous lessons, the Golgi apparatus kind of packages secretions and then releases them into secretory vesicles. So inside these secretory vesicles would be the saliva. 
they migrate up to the top of the cell here and then you can see they release their secretion out of the cell by exocytosis. Now the saliva would be in the duct of the gland and then it would travel to the inside of the mouth in this case. Okay, So this is an example of merocrine secretion where we produce these secretory vesicles they migrate, right, and the, they would contain the saliva in this case, and then by exocytosis release the saliva into the hollow part of the gland, and then it goes into a duct, and then the duct will open up to the inside of our mouth. Okay, so salivary, salivary glands do this, and then most of our sweat glands in the body do this. You have the sweat that you produce on your forehead, the sweat that you produce on your, you know, your chest or your back. The palms have a lot of these. Your soles of your feet. These are the these are the glands that kind of cool us down. Not glands in the axilla or the pubic region. They have a different type of se uh, secretion. These are going to be most of our sweat glands. All right, so this is known as merocrine secretion. Again, what's important is the secretory vesicles and then the releasing of the saliva by a process known as exocytosis. Okay. The second type of uh, mode of secretion is known as apocrine secretion. Here the top of the glandular cell is actually going to pinch off and the cell, part of that top part of the cell, is going to become part of the secretion. Let's take a look and then I'll go back to the note. All right, so one of the glands in the, the breast does this. So you can see here again, you would have the nucleus. Here's the Golgi apparatus. Uh, we produce, in this case, the, the, the breast secretions, right? They're going to be in the vesicles, in the secretory vesicles here. But notice the secretory vesicles are not releasing the product by exocytosis. What happens is the top of the cell pinches off. Okay, and releases from the rest of the cell, it breaks off. Then this breaks down and becomes part of the secretion. So they call this apocrine, right? You can remember it that way because what's the top of the cell, of an epithelial cell called? It's the apical portion, right? The apical portion is the top, so you can remember the top of the cell. Good news, that cell will regrow and then continue to make new, in this case, you know, breast secretions, right, mammary secretions, and then the process will happen over and over again, but we re re regrow these cells. Okay, so this is known as apocrine. All right, so the mammary, mammary glands do this, and then also sweat glands known as apocrine sweat glands. These would be found in the axilla, and the pubic region. Okay, so this sweat, believe it or not, from your axilla or the pubic region is actually more of a thicker, more cloudier secretion compared to the merocrine sweat gland. This is more of a watery secretion. This one's going to be a little bit thicker because, again, part of the cell is in the secretion. Okay? Okay, so that's the apocrine. The last one is known as the uh, holocrine secretion. Here, the uh, the top cells. This is actually going to be more of a stratified um, situation. This the the superficial cells in the gland actually burst, and the whole cell becomes part of the secretion. Uh, let me show you what I mean, and then we'll come back to um, that that slide. So, a sebaceous gland in the skin. Right, which produces oil, right? So a sebaceous gland is an oil gland. And you notice, guys, the sebaceous gland is attached to a hair and a hair follicle. Right? So we release our oil onto the hair, it helps to lubricate the hair, and then the oil comes out onto the surface of the skin and moisturize our skin. So if we were to look at the cells inside the gland, it would look like this. So notice it's multiple layers of cells. It's stratified. So you can see here, let's just say the oil is being produced in the secretory vesicles here. But again, notice the secretory vesicles are not releasing the oil by exocytosis. Instead, the cells at the top, the entire cell, will burst and become part of the secretion. We actually lose these cells into the secretion. So. Um, the oil, as a result, is more thick, right? So is oil, you know, is more th is, is definitely thicker than water. And that's because, again, you have all these cells as part of the secretion. So think of it as the whole cell bursting and becoming part of the secretion, right? So as we lose these cells up here, good news, the cells at the bottom 
are stem cells. These are continually dividing to give rise to new cells as we lose the cells up top. And you can see them here. They're in different stages of mitosis, right? Here's like a metaphase, right? Here's an anaphase, here's a telophase, that type of thing. So you can see these cells are in you know, constant division as we lose these top cells. Okay, so we have to replace them. So um, we find this example would be the sebaceous glands. Again, if you want to just jot down, the sebaceous gland is an oil gland. And again, the good news is as we lose the cells, they are replaced by stem cells. So this is what we call holocrine secretion. Okay, and our last slide, uh, just a couple definitions. When a gland produces a watery secretion, we call that a serous gland. If the gland produces a more thicker mucus, that is just known as a mucus gland. And then again, there's even some glands that are mixed. They produce a combination of serous and mucus. So that concludes our uh, lectures on epithelial. The next lessons that we're going to go into will be connective tissue.